Mac apps. First off, if you just hatched into the macOS world, here's the starter pack. Install all of these and you'll be locked and loaded to explore the depths of the Mac app iceberg. And luckily this video is the iceberg. I have a list that I've been assembling over the last few months and its contents include apps most of human species have never heard of. I'll go through it top to bottom, revealing each app one by one. By the end, you should have not just a simple machine, but a power station, a tank that can devour any task thrown its way. Enjoy the video. Starting things off is the Amethyst. I don't know why I said it like that, maybe because of the crystal logo. Anyway, so you just set it up and go bloop 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 bloop. It's like the rectangle app from the starter pack, but not at all actually. It has these preset layouts and if you hit a keyboard shortcut, look, it will now rotate apps right, for example. And when I open more apps, it just puts them in these layouts automatically. If you learn how to use it, it's pretty cool, I think. I have not learned it yet. It's my second time using it. Menu bar dock. This just... Well, it's in the name. It makes the menu bar both your menu bar and your dock. You can click on an app and it just opens it. Yep. Pretty simple. Most recent apps are on the left and it just makes it so you can hide the dock and not use it if you want. That's all cool and all, but you're probably thinking, let's dive a little deeper. Unsplash wallpapers. You know Unsplash, the free stock photo website? Probably not, okay. This app is just nice wallpapers from the website piled into one place. Also, if you're a fan of this wallpaper, it's from my wallpaper pack, link in the description. While you're down there, feel free to become my fan as well. Taiki. This is a notepad, you know? Nothing much else to say really, just type away. Tinker Tool. This free little app looks just like the settings app and it lets you tinker a little bit with your macOS. My favorite settings include add quit menu to finder, use dimmed icons for hidden applications, disable delay when showing hidden dock, minimize effect, suck in, <clears throat> you can also change the launchpad layout, which is fun. I forgot to read the small text which says that every folder I created will be removed and I had like 10 folders. Nice. Okay, into the bin. If you thought these were fun, let's go a little deeper. Oversight. If you put tape on your camera, what imbecile would do that, honestly? This app will monitor your mic and webcam and give you a notification alert when the internal mic or webcam is activated. You can now know for sure that no one is spying on you or that someone is. Latest. An open source app that checks if all your other apps are up to date and lets you quickly update them pretty neat. Clean Shot or Shutter or the default Mac screenshot tool aka QuickTime. Well, all of these take screenshots and screen recordings. Clean Shot is the best, but for others like Shutter, you don't have to spend your doubloons as long as you're willing to deal with the buy me now pop-ups. Or if you're not a YouTuber and you don't really care about screen recordings, just click Command Shift 5 and you can record anything you want. Better display. One annoying thing about macOS is that it only likes specific resolutions when it comes to external displays, like 5K, which are rare among the mortal realm. Text on a 5K screen will look sharp, smooth, nice, but if you have something like a 1440p or 1080p monitor, it will look like this. Yikes. That's where better display comes in. It does some weird shenanigans and upscales and then downscales, and I don't actually know what it does, but you're able to choose from all these high DPI resolutions, which means that your text and other things on your monitor will look crisp AF. I have a 1440p monitor and I use the high DPI 1080p resolution, which just looks so much better than the default one. And it also lets you control your external monitor's brightness with your keyboard buttons. Pretty cool. But let's get down even more. Pika. Pronounced Pika. You know, Photoshop has this cool ability to just yoink any color with the color picker. So this app adds that ability to macOS for free. There's also one called Sip, which has some cooler features like saving color palettes and a very nice logo. Arc. It's basically Chrome, but looks better and has some cool features. All the extensions work on it as well, because it's Chromium based, just like Chrome or Microsoft Edge. I made an entire video about this browser, link in the description. Setup. Now most Mac apps are paid apps, some I mentioned already, like CleanShot for screenshots or Sip with the nice logo. And this app is no exception. It's essentially a one subscription that gives you access to more than 240 apps all at once for 10 bucks a month. And it 
includes clean shot, which by itself is 8 bucks a month. It's not going to be worth it for you if you already bought some of the apps here separately or if you're not planning to use anything apart from the starter pack. But if that's not you, then it's worth considering. Here are my favorites. Bartender for hiding menu bar icons. Craft for writing documents. It's very similar to Notion. Better touch tool for configuring custom gestures for the trackpad and my mouse. Mission Control Plus for the ability to close out apps when you're inside of Mission Control, Disk Drill for file recovery, Yoink, which I'll talk about later, yeah, there's many. But I don't feel like we're deep enough yet. Let's go further. Alt Tab. This is Alt Tab on Mac, and this is Alt Tab on Windows. I can see some advantages over on the dark side, and this app brings those advantages over to us. Le Mac users. You're now able to see app previews and separate windows of the same app when you're in Alt Tab. Nice. One password. It's a bad idea to just have one password, just for security. This app manages all your passwords in one place, syncs across devices, and you know, so you don't get hacked easily. Give those hackers a challenge, am I right? Al Dente. Click the app logo, hold Option, System Information, Power, Maximum Capacity. This is your battery health essentially. Just wanted to show you a fancy way to get here. And you're probably aware that when your battery is at zero or 100%, it's not really feeling very well. It's best to keep it between 30 and 80%. So this app lets you limit how much your battery can charge up to. Once it reaches that level, it'll start using the power cable and bypass the battery to power your Mac. Luminar. If you take pictures ever, you know, you can do that. This app is just a great Snapchat filter, basically. It immediately makes your Instagram posts or profile pictures look that much better. And the learning curve, well, it's flat. You just slide a few sliders, see what looks the most kawaii, and there you go. Was that deep enough? I don't think so. Let's dive a little deeper. RCMD. This app lets you press the right command key and a letter to instantly switch to an app assigned to that letter. By default, it just sets up your most used apps with the letters that their names start with. So command A switches to Arc for me, the browser I mentioned before. It's quite intuitive because on the daily basis, you're probably not going to be using more than five or six apps, so the letters are not hard to memorize. Horror. It's a timer in your menu bar. You can set a timer so you don't procrastinate. This is one of my favorite things to do in order to activate Parkinson's law. It says that work fills the time that it's given. If I set a timer and make it a rule to stop it as soon as I look over to my cat doing some weird thing on the carpet and then resume it when I'm back, I just get the work done so much faster. Try it, it works. Unless you don't have a cat. Elements of Flow. Now we can push the timer situation a little further with the Pomodoro technique. It means that you work for 25 minutes, then you stop and rest for 5 minutes, and do it 4 times. Yep, that's a lot of work and very little rest, but apparently it works. Configure this app with the times you want and it'll also sit in your menu bar and tell you when to stop and go. Now you're productive. Element of Obsidian. I heard about Obsidian many times, but never actually downloaded and tried it. And there was one YouTube video that finally convinced me. So I got it, and although I'm not a super advanced note taker, I'm enjoying it so far. It has a nice, clean interface, and the fact that all the notes are stored on my computer as plain text files, which is super future-proof because all computers can read plain text files, is what really got me into it. I'm proud to say that I'm now in the middle of the bell curve. We're now almost at the bottom. Let's go down even more. Self-control. This app feels so painful to turn on because you can set it to block websites. And once you click start block, you can restart your Mac, quit the app, do a backflip, and it will not open. It's impossible. I'm a YouTube addict and I use it to procrastinate all the time, so blocking it is really good, but painful. Element of Mic Drop. This app lets you press a keyboard shortcut and it immediately mutes your microphone across all of the OS. It works with Zoom, Slack, FaceTime, Skype and all the others. Stats. Ever wanted to find out how many gigajoules your Mac is using up? Well, this is the app. It will show you 
all of these things in the menu bar. Yoink! Apart from having a cool name, this app is just the best if you frequently move files or edit videos like me. Probably not super likely. It's a temporary shelf where you can put a file, then go somewhere else and pick up the file from there and drop it in. Yeah, it's very useful. Unclack. This one will mute your microphone while you're typing. And that's it. That's the iceberg. Use it wisely. Oh, I almost forgot. Just one more thing. Psych.